Hi class, we're going to read a book about a tree. What do you think tree starts with? T -t -t tree starts with a T. Okay, so this tree is in a rainforest and this is a great big tree called a kapok tree. The Great Kapok Tree by Lynn Cherry. She's the author. She writes the words. The Great Kapok Tree. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been al alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great Kapok tree, and then he left. The smaller man took the ax that he carried and he struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the, off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great Kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. What do you see on that page? He's gonna sit down, or he sat down and he's going to sleep. A boa constrictor, a big snake lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash that the ax had made in the tree. And then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. So his family had all lived. The snakes live in the tree. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Bzz, senor, my hive is in this kapok tree and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. Oh, did you hear that? We need the bee. Do you remember how the flowers, the flowers make new seeds? The bee helps them do that. He helps them do that. And if the bee doesn't do that, then um, it won't make new seeds and he lives in the tree. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the Kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. <laughs> Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. Oh, so the monkeys live in the trees. They need the trees. And they say that the roots that go down into the soil, down into the dirt, help hold everything in place so that it doesn't get washed away by the rain. Oh, a toucan? Do you see the toucan? What do you think toucan starts with? T, t, t. A toucan and a macaw and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Squawk, senor, squawked the toucan. You must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the lands, on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears where once there was life and beauty. 
Only black and smoldering ruins remain. Oh, do you see the frogs? These are called red eye tree frogs. And you can see down here, the poison dart frogs. I think, I'm not quite sure what all of them are, but you can see the red eyed tree frogs. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Rabbit, squeak, senor. A ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. Oh, what do you see? That's a jaguar. Isn't it beautiful with all of its spots? A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat, his spotted fur blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and he padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor. The K-pop tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Oh, so he doesn't eat plants, does he? He has sharp teeth so that he can eat meat. He can eat other animals. And if all the other animals aren't there, then he won't have any animals to eat. Four tree porcupines. Can we count it? One, two, three, four. Four tree porcupines swung down from the branch, from branch to branch, and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. Oh, do you guys know oxygen is what's in the air? that we breathe and we need it to live. And senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Oh, so the trees help us breathe. They give us oxygen in the air. Ooh, look at these ant eaters. They have really long tongues so that they can get ants. Okay, several ant eaters climb down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped ant eater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to top, chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. Do you guys like trees? You want trees, don't you? We need our trees to live, and also they're beautiful and they provide homes for all of the animals. Oh, do you see this? This is a sloth. They're very slow. Ready? A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? Do you think trees are beautiful? Do you think you can be slow like a sloth?
A child from the Yanomomo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man and he murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look at, upon all of us with new eyes. So what does that mean? The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great Kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. Look at all of those different animals that depend on the rainforest and so many more. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming down through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound for the creatures were all strangely silent. Why do you think they're all quiet? They're, do you think they're silent because they're afraid? Or do you think because they're waiting for him to, to do something? The man stood and picked up his ax. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped, he turned and looked at the animals and the child. Oh, he was about to swing his ax and keep chopping the tree. What do you think he's going to do next? He hesitated. He waited for a second. Then he dropped the ax and he walked out of the rainforest. So what did he choose to do? He chose not to chop, chop down that great kapok tree, didn't he? Do you think that that is treating your neighbor as yourself by helping take care of the trees and the rainforests? He was helping all of those different animals, wasn't he? And helping the whole world. The great kapok tree. Bye class. <laughs>